Welcome to this week's Curious About Nature podcast. This week I'm joined by Kirsty Kethley from Auntie Kay's Childcare. Hello, Kirsty. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, having a nice day. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? So I am qualified in early years. That's what I chose to do many years ago, over 20 years ago now. And for years, I'd worked in a few different earlier settings. So nurseries, was registered to Childmind at one point as well, along with my mum. Then I moved south and became a nanny. And I did that all the way up until having my own children nine years ago and then have carried it on a bit ad hoc and now work as a parent consultant. So all my years experience and all the tips and tricks and all the things you pick up with working with children for those years, I now put into cons consultations with parents. So it can be anything if they need help with potty training, if they're dealing with tricky behaviour or recently a lot of school starts in September are needing a bit extra support or parents are needing support in that. Anything really, all areas covered. And yeah, just help and give support where I can, really. Yeah, I was going to say, how did you get involved? But I think maybe it's interesting to know, why did you get involved in childcare? So my mum was a childminder. And in the school holidays, when I sort of turned 16, probably a bit before then, actually, I would be roped into helping as a childminder's assistant. My mum worked alongside a friend of mine's mum, whose childminding business it was. And so we both would be roped into helping as assistants in the school holidays. And then I would go on and do babysitting, as we all did as young teenagers. For a long time, I actually wanted to be a primary school teacher and I chose all my GCSEs and A-levels around being a teacher. And I finished my A-levels, which I found really stressful and just thought, I'm not sure I want to go to university. So took a, a year out, carried on working in a pub, carried on helping out childminding and then went to work abroad as a children's holiday rep. So I had a wonderful summer out in the Canary <laughs> Islands, but it was there that I was like, actually, yeah, maybe it's younger children that I want to work with. And to carry on being a holiday rep, they wanted people to be qualified in childcare. So I remember ringing my mum and saying, can you look into college courses for me? When I come back, I really want to do an early years qualification. And it all went from there, really. So yeah, probably my mum's influence because she had always looked after children. And she had said many times, she thought that's perhaps what I should do. But of course, when your mother, especially when you're a teenager, suggests things to you you don't always want to listen do you so she'll love no. me saying that yeah and yeah the rest they say is sort of history really yeah no, that sounds fantastic why is time outside so important for children's development I think we know as adults don't we that spending time outside can make you feel good it releases those happy endorphins so any exercise but we live in quite a rural area and there's all the bird song, you see all the butterflies and all those sort of countryside sounds and, and smells. But it's good. It's a good to feast on the senses and obviously the vitamin D that it brings to you as well. So, yeah, it's really important, I think, for kids to be outside and not always just stuck on the inside. Yeah, I think it can be quite hard at this time of year as well, isn't it? When we're building up to kids sitting exams or maybe they've just yeah. done their SATs. Have you got any tips about how parents might support their children to be a bit more resilient when dealing with exams? I think modelling resilience is a learned behaviour at the end of the day. So if you're quite resilient and show quite a a less anxious front, shall we say, then your child's more likely to be less anxious about things. And we had this a lot at the beginning of the pandemic. Everybody went into panic mode, as we all did about lockdown. And we did talk a lot about resilience then. And I think that term has been thrown around an awful lot the last two years. But really, kids are resilient, but mainly because they've learnt how to be from us and how we've shown them. So everything parenting, isn't it? It's good role modelling, I think. So if you have a good positive attitude, they're more likely to have a good positive attitude towards things as well. But it's letting them know that you're there to chat to them if they're worried about anything. You're a support network. You're not there to lecture them on or anything or always necessarily make suggestions. So especially with GCSEs, you know, you can guide them through revision. School are very well equipped to help kids with that. You just need to be there to support and to guide them through. And it can be just things, making sure that they go to bed at a reasonable time. They've got enough food and just providing that safe space that's not nagging them. And, oh, you haven't revised yet to go in and do it. Let them be in charge of their own schedule, but be there for them when they need it and let them know that you're there. As yeah, I need it. Yeah, so it's being encouraging and supportive, isn't it? Rather than that kind yeah. of get on with it, yeah, kind of attitude. So thinking about the children and outside, how does that time in nature support well-being? Then, do you think? I think they can feel less stressed, less anxious. So we know with send children, for instance, who have a lot of anxiety and things, that being outdoors and with nature can help be a really calming influence. Obviously, it teaches them an awful lot being outdoors. And I think children are naturally curious and being outdoors and seeing lots of different things that really boosts 
that curiosity, which obviously going through life will really help them. So have you got any recommended nature activities for families? I think lockdown was a big eye opener to parents about getting outside and what to do. And I don't think it needs to be too complicated. Just if you've got a local woods, we've got some just around the corner. We spent a lot of time there in lockdown and we make a conscious effort to go there quite regularly or now as well. Children just climbing trees, fallen logs they can balance on. You know, it's all good for their physical development. And again, boosting the self-esteem when they feel that they've achieved something. You can go on listening walks. What can you hear? You can make tick charts for things for them to find. How many yellow butterflies can you find? How many blue ones? You can talk about habitats. So near us, there was badger sets. So we had a chat about that. And my then three-year-old would love to tell us all about where the badgers live and they live in sets. And it, it develops, doesn't it? It helps bring on more conversation about other animals and maybe, you know, maybe where they live. There's lots and lots of things I think you can do. It doesn't have to be physical making and all the forest school necessary yeah. activities. It can just be something as simple going for a walk and talking about what you see, the smells and what you can hear. Yeah. And it leads on yeah. to other conversations then. Yeah, absolutely. We love just going out and lying on the grass and listening sometimes. Yeah. Or and, looking uh, at the clouds, making shapes yeah, out of the clouds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very and, relaxing. Uh, you need that, I think, as parents as well. It's just constant busy isn't it otherwise or rolling down a hill that's one of yeah. my children's favorite things to do as long as there's no dog <laughs> but yeah it's hours of fun we were recently on holiday in Cornwall and we had a big hill one side and the sea the other so it was a big coastal path and things but the kids we've got lovely visions of them just the giggles that came out of them rolling down the hill and then as adults thought oh we really want to turn as well because there's just something about rolling down a hill isn't there that's just fun and it's free and easy to do and yeah, it was a lovely setting as well. Yeah, we were at just a local playground the other day, which is next to some open fields, which is a really lovely view. And I couldn't help myself. I was on the <laughs> play kit, <laughs> on the rope swings and things yeah. that were there. It is that kind of, I think, sometimes just reconnecting with your own inner child. It can be a lot of fun. And it's kids like it when you do that as well, don't they? They love it when you're joining in and doing those kind of things and saying, oh, look, a mummy balance too. And I think you maybe appreciate how hard it is for them to use the equipment and all the muscles and things that they're using. Because I know I definitely felt it. I've been on a swing many a time and then come off and thought, oh, my legs and my abs have had a workout on here. And you really appreciate how good it is and how beneficial it is to children to use all those things. Sometimes my daughter is a bit reluctant to go outside. Unfortunately, we've got a Disney subscription and she's got herself a little <laughs> bit hooked on it. I want to be outside side a lot of the time probably more than she does so have you got any tips for parents who maybe want to get their reluctant kid outside i think if they're reluctant all the time then yes you definitely need to really adjust it if it's some days think actually do they just need a day watching a bit of disney and just chilling out have they had a busy week have they been outside and done lots of activity perhaps they're saying it because actually they're just quite tired but yeah for any children that are quite reluctant you need to make it fun. You need to give them an incentive to get out. So it's got to be made fun. But to parents before about, uh, especially preschoolers, why don't you go out and say, we'll go be superheroes today. Or we've got this important letter to post and we need to walk to the post box. And then making it fun on the way. Like, what can you see? The road sign game, which was always one of my mum's favourites when I was a child. And I've used it all through my nanny years and still use it with my children now, looking for the shapes of road signs. And which is great because, you know, once they learn to drive, they've had some understanding of yeah. road signs and things. But it's just giving them things to spot and yeah giving them incentive to get out so it doesn't have to be a bribe of oh if you go outside you can have sweets or whatever but it's just while you're out making it fun and you usually find once they're out the door they're like different children aren't they they just yeah, change to get on with it and they really enjoy it but it is just getting them over the door but explaining to them as well the benefits of getting outside why it's important an important part of our lifestyle is to be outdoors and to be active and not just sitting inside so boundaries on using tech inside are really good for that as well and saying you've had your hour or screen yeah. time and things and make them responsible for their time as well especially when they get into the, the tween years my daughter's nine we try and get her to be responsible for her own sort of timings on things obviously we're there to guide her but it works a bit better when she's made the decision and she understands why she's made it but she can be quite reluctant as well at the weekends to even go out for a walk or whatever because she's tired from school but she understands that it's important, even if it's just a gentle walk somewhere, that she's got out and she's done something. Yeah, yeah. My daughter at the moment is trying to do like exercise boot camp <laughs> and be in charge of mummy and daddy's training, which has been quite useful to encourage her to go outside more. So it's all, let's go and do the exercises outside and you can be in charge about what we do, how many sit-ups. <laughs> and groups <laughs> of <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> but it, it's working. We're starting to get out of our lockdown 
poundage and yeah. to get fit again. And she feels like she's in control and she loves that. And it stopped her from being such a TV addict. Which she yeah. really wants to get away from without saying no, no more TV at all. It's about, like you said, giving her that boundary and then something to look forward to. And she loves bossing mummy and daddy around anyway. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're, we're funneling that into something positive. Now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, not You'll sure be super fit. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing cosmic kids yoga, which obviously is a little yes, bit more relaxed. We've done that. So we've been trying to encourage her to use the storytelling outside herself. And she's starting to really enjoy that idea as well. But we have a hammock in the garden on sunny days and it's a fight to get into that after we've had <laughs> a boot camp with my daughter. I can imagine. <laughs> I think yeah. as well for kids outside, if it's just part of your lifestyle from them being babies then it's just one of those things my kids love being in the garden whatever time of year we've had mud kitchens and in the winter as long as they've been wrapped up or what have you they've still spent time outside in the garden quite often without us saying to them oh I think you should get outside and I just think it's because they've it's always been the case and we haven't been fair weather parents we've gone on walks and we've taken sandwiches and picnics with us even in November somewhere on a walk my little boy's fifth birthday party recently was a forest school party and it was the 30th of November it was freezing cold and luckily the sun was out but it was really cold but we just we still did it and all the children enjoyed it and a lot of the parents said oh we probably wouldn't have come out today because it's so cold so it, it gave them a purpose to get out and they just had the best fun and we made it very child-led as well so I had a few little activities set up but just watching them they made ones and then just watching them interact and playing it was wonderful it was really lovely and it's the kind of party now i think actually it was quite cheap and easy to do mm. potentially might do that every year until he's about 18 <laughs> <laughs> much cheaper and better than some of the other things but then we looked in with the weather if it had been raining it perhaps would have been mm. a bit too miserable for everyone but but it was lovely and it was just exactly what he wanted really and helped with all the COVID restrictions and things as well, because we're outdoors. Yeah. So. yeah. Now my daughter's mentioned about having a teddy bear's picnic for her birthday, which is, again, a similar idea, isn't it? Being outside yeah. with, your, with your stuffed toys and bring a few friends around a picnic blanket. And it, it is so much cheaper than paying for a child entertainment. And it's lovely that she suggested that as well. Yeah. And so she's yeah. obviously already thinking yeah. to the outdoors. So yeah. it's lovely. And yeah, if it is I, raining, then you need a marquee or a, a gazebo or something, don't you? And say, we can still have it. We've talked a little bit about obviously encouraging kids outside and you gave them some really great parenting tips. Are there any books or resources that you'd recommend on gentle parenting and ways to engage with your children? In general or for outside? Yeah, generally, yeah. I am not actually a massive one for parenting books, which might sound a bit yeah, odd. that's fine. But I find that there's so many people telling you exactly how you should parent that I've always stayed away from them. Really. So I would actually say don't read too many books. There's lots of information already on the internet. Obviously, there's lots of information on my <laughs> social medias and things as well that I give. I'm very much more about supporting families and parents in what they do rather than telling them what they should be doing. Because I think parents, they already know. Sometimes they just need a bit of reassurance and guidance. They don't need somebody actually telling them how to be a parent. So my advice would be not to read too much information and find that gut instinct again, because somewhere along the lines over the, the last maybe 20 years and that, less and less parents use that gut instinct. Yeah. And doctors often say it actually, what do you think, you know, mother knows best and they'll use that phrase. And I think that we get a bit distracted by what's going on social media and all these books and things that we forget that we intuitively know we don't act on those intuitions enough sometimes and you are the parent you are the one that knows your child the best what will work and sometimes reading all those books it can be very one way and all families are different all children are different even like I saw someone yesterday about routines, for instance. Babies don't all have to be in bed at exactly the same time at night. Everyone's different and you've just got to find your own routine and be happy and be secure in the knowledge that you're still doing the right thing, even if your baby naps at a different time to somebody else's. It doesn't matter. Some comparison's brilliant, I think, between families yeah. and babies because it helps you have a little bit of guidance about where you're at with something. You've got to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it as a parent. You're perfectly capable and ignore all the background noise yeah absolutely it's brilliant advice i do think that when my daughter was born there was a lot of advice around like sleep patterns from family and friends because she didn't sleep she just one of these babies that was awake a lot compared to mm -hmm. other babies of similar age but it took until she was three before she was ready to have that kind of ability to sleep and it was a long time in coming but now she's very good during the night and she's confident and happy 
And I think if we had taken on some of the advice, we wouldn't have got there with her in the end in the way that we have. So I completely agree with you. So how do you think we can encourage a child's connection with nature? You've touched on this a little bit already. Uh, any other suggestions? Obviously, being outside as much as possible. So right from the get-go, get your child out, even if it's just you go on a daily walk. I always say to new mums, it's quite beneficial just for the mum's mental health, making sure you get out of the house at once a day, at least. And even if you're not seeing anybody else, but getting out and about for a walk. There are TV programmes and the BBC have some wonderful programmes. CBBS is brilliant for touching all those things, isn't it? You've got Steve Backshaw as they get older. And then obviously it's David Attenborough, which both my children quite like watching. Because that helps them understand nature that's not local to them. And because obviously we have different animals in our country to other countries and different trees and butterflies. And it just broadens their horizon and hopefully makes them want to maybe travel to see those places as well, which can only be a, a good thing as well to learn more about it. But yeah, just having resources at home really and just getting them outside as much as you can. So what's next for Auntie Kay's childcare? I have recently started freelancing in the media as well. Another string to my bow has been writing parenting articles, so on all sorts of things, which has been really wonderful. And I do a lot of expert talks as well. I've recently been on BBC Radio. This morning, I've given two press requests on very different subjects for two different publications as a parenting expert. And yeah, just going to hopefully keep supporting and helping as many parents as possible and see what happens really. So if we want to read some more of your articles and find out more about you, where would we go? So you can look at my website, which is auntiekayschildcare.co.uk. So that's auntie with an IE and K as in the initial K. Or you can find me as Auntie K Parent Consultant on everywhere. I think basically on social media. <laughs> <laughs> or just Google my name, Kirsty Ketley, and it, it all comes up. It's easy. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kirsty. Some really sound tips in there, I think, that are no, real no, thank common you for sense. Having me. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. And you, yeah, thank you. Have a lovely you. day. Thank you.